I'm going to talk about will layer on top of uh, the, uh, the first hour of presentation. Uh, I'm Chris Berka. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Advanced Brain Monitoring. We have been in business for about 12 years, now a little over 12 years. Um, we have received over $28 million in funding from National Institutes of Health, DARPA, more recently from some of the military funding agencies, Army, uh, ONR, Office of Naval Research to advance the development of mobile, easy to use neurotechnologies and data analysis platforms that can essentially optimize performance across even our most challenging conditions. So I'm going to talk, I won't be able to talk about everything that we're doing. Um, you're welcome to go to our website, advancedbrainmonitoring.com. There's a wealth of information on there. Uh, we also have my colleague Rob Rubio is here with me today, and we're going to be doing some demos at lunchtime. So please take advantage of, of either the website or our being here to interact with us. We're really interested. I mean, we, we consider this a select group of people who are looking into the future and, and seeing what types of technologies they want to optimize their lifestyle. And so we're looking for input from you as our, our future customers and future users. And, Features to you know, accelerating the development of neurotechnology and optimizing modern lifestyles. So I preempted myself a little bit in saying this that, that we've been developing low-cost, easy-to-use portable devices. Uh, we introduced a very successful in-home diagnostic system that completely replaced the uh, necessity to go into a sleep lab. I don't know, have you ever, has anyone ever gone into a sleep lab for a diagnosis? It's pretty cumbersome. They hook you up with a lot of wires, there's a lot of people watching you sleep. Uh, we were able to develop a really simple device that could be used at home and fulfill all of the same functions. Uh, and that device has since been sold to uh, Watermark Medical, which is a company that John Scully was involved with. Uh, very successful and really revolutionized the way that sleep apnea is diagnosed at home. So we've been working more recently on taking all of the concepts that we've developed for monitoring the brain's electrical activity and trying to understand more about how the brain functions and, and how we can enhance brain functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we now have uh, uh, over seven, actually seven out of the seven top ten neuroscience labs are using our technology in, in a variety of studies. So in some cases for clinical development of, for autism and epilepsy and neurological disease, uh, but in many cases just to study optimized, uh, optimized performance. Uh, we've done a lot of work with sleep deprivation and trying to understand how sleep deprivation affects you and how you can mitigate that. Uh, peak performance training, you know, whether it's in athletics or peak mental performance training. Um, and, you know, we, we are very interested in partnering with, you know, if any of you are interested in starting some studies along these domains, we have a lot of partnership opportunities and we, and we like input from the rest of the world. Uh, we do have a number of Fortune 500 companies that are also working with us and we work with almost all of the major gov government research labs. So today I'm going to focus uh, on, on three areas. Um, primarily on sleep and the optimization of sleep. So let me just ask a question. How many of you are familiar with the sleep cycle? Or what types of sleep state? Okay, good, good. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, several different devices and studies that we are designing or have designed to optimize sleep. Uh, and a little, just a little bit about some of the work that we did on, on nutritional supplements um, most of you are probably familiar with omega-3 fatty acid supplements and some of the benefits. Fish oil, yes? No? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, good. Um, and, then, and then just touch on briefly our uh, accelerated learning program that we've developed. And accelerated learning encompasses a, a very large group of studies uh, that we've done at the simple level for accelerating skill learning for individuals and more recently at the team level where we're looking at teams of, of four to six people and um, trying to look for patterns across their brains that optimize team interaction and team performance. So the device that we call now the Somneo 
uh, was, was really kind of the brain, it came, came out of a, a series of studies that we did with the military. We worked with about 300 Marines up at Camp Pendleton. And um, initially we just established that Marines get sleep deprived too, of course. And even though they are optimized in almost every way um, from, from mental performance and physical performance, from training and selection, um, they still do suffer some ill effects of sleep deprivation. And what we were tasked with by the Marines was develop for us something that is not pharmaceutical that can assist our Marines when they're deployed and there's just a, a natural uh, sleep deprivation. So this, what the Somnio does is incorporates um, a controlled environment for sleeping. So the, so the concept was this is something that you can take with you anywhere, whether you're in Iraq or Afghanistan, and facilitate uh, getting an efficient nap uh, anywhere in the world, anytime. It also uh, is designed to accelerate sleep onset. So the concept is, of course, if you have a, a, a brief opportunity for a nap, you want to get to sleep as quickly as possible. So, so we have sensory gating and sensory alerting. Uh, we screen out visual information through the use of the mask. We have uh, headphone, earphones in the, in the mask that allow us to deliver soothing sounds or awakening sounds. Um, and then we have blue light panels so that when we do wake you up, we use blue light to stimulate the brain and to eliminate any kind of sleep inertia or grogginess. Uh, and then we also have a heating element that, around the mask that, that we've shown promotes more rapid sleep onset and also causes you to have a deeper sleep cycle. So we built that all into a device, into a device, but the brains of the device really is the brain. So we have three um, sensors to record the EEG uh, on the forehead, and those, the, those EEG signals are then analyzed by our automated algorithms. So we've developed automated algorithms that look, look at the EEG activity and stage the sleep in real time. So now what the device is going to do is, is based on how much time you tell it you have for a nap, it's going to put you to sleep as quickly as possible, planning to wake you up at the time that you've designated, and then use the sensory gating and sensory alerting to optimize the sleep cycle. So uh, everybody has sleep complaints at some point in their life. I'm, I'm sure that all of you have experienced, whether it's with a new baby or worrying about a job or, uh, you know, there are very various things that disrupt our sleep. And these are the most commonly cited reasons for insufficient sleep. Trouble falling asleep, poor environment, uh, returning to sleep, so you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep, uh, forced awakening from sleep, or, or just plain not enough time to sleep. And, and all of us have that experience. So, so again, here's, here was the, the concept that went into developing the Somnio. Um, these are the four stages of a sleep cycle. You start out in wake, and then you go into stage one, stage two, stage three, which is your deep, stage three and four are your deep sleep, your slow wave sleep. There's a very characteristic brain pattern. It's a very slow, rhythmic, we call it a delta wave, one to two cycles per second. Um, and it's during that deep sleep that many, many things take place in the body. So you, are, you generate new proteins, repair all of your damaged muscles, uh, generate new enzymes, <coughs> your brain functioning. So, so slow wave sleep is very important. And then after that you have your REM cycle, your dreaming sleep. And you know, until recently we've been studying REM sleep for many, many years and, and uh, a little bit puzzled about its function. But now we know that you have to have some dreaming sleep in order to take memories from short-term memory into long-term memory. So there's a whole process that takes place of memory encoding. And if you don't get your dreaming sleep, you're not going to lay down any new memories. Uh, so it's very critical. Also critical for creative thinking and intuitive thinking. Um, so basically, ideally, you need an entire sleep cycle to have a perfect nap. Now the problem with that is an entire sleep cycle takes at least an hour or up to 90 minutes. Um, now if you, if you start to think about 
your sleep at night and uh, you start to study your, your sleep, you'll quickly become aware of these sleep cycles. You fall asleep um, in the beginning of the night, the first sleep cycle, you have the most uh, deep sleep and a, and a minimal amount of REM. And most people usually have time for about four total sleep cycles at night. The last two cycles, you start, you've gotten your, your quotient of deep sleep or slow wave sleep, and you start to have more percentage of REM the last two cycles. And almost everyone has a natural arousal at the end of a sleep cycle. So now that I've told you this, you're probably either you're already aware of it or you're probably going to be aware that at some point in the night you're going to wake up and you're going to think, oh, I just finished one or two sleep cycles because you do have arousals at the end of the sleep cycle. So you have to think about a nap. Uh, first of all, everything that we know about napping is napping at any time of day in any way, shape, or form is beneficial. So even if you only have five minutes to close your eyes and, and relax and, and perhaps drift off into you know, light sleep, uh, it, can, it can improve your performance for the remainder of the day. So what this means for, for trips or for any of you who are on, on some sort of shift work or where you're chronically sleep deprived, any time you have available to take a quick nap, do it. Now, you might say, I can't nap during the day. A lot of people say that. So part of what this device is designed to do is to give you that environment and stimulation so that you can take a quick nap. And essentially what you're doing then is you're sort of, sort of filling up your tank, your sleep reservoir, where, where you actually can accumulate the benefits of, of sleep and not necessarily then need a full eight hours that night or, or even, even less than that. So people have actually sustained themselves with napping throughout the day over over long periods of time and that can be done. Not necessarily recommended because there are some benefits of, of this long sleep cycle that we usually get. So I'll, I'll talk now a little bit and, and if you come over to our demo you can at least uh, uh, touch the nap cap, put it on, or the Somnio, put it on. I'll tell you a quick story. Only have a quick minute. Uh, we used to call this the nap cap, so if I divert and call it nap cap, my, my apologies. But we did a market survey, and we found that most people in the U.S. responded negatively to the term nap because they felt it was associated with laziness. So we changed the name to Somnium. So, uh, so what we want to do first is block out light and sound. You know, those are the two uh, most common complaints about trying to take a nap, particularly in the middle of the day. So we screen out all the ambient light, we screen out all the ambient so sound using a white noise generator, and, and then this allows you or encourages you to fall asleep in, in any, any setting. Uh, now the next thing that we do is um, we turn on the facial warming. And we have really good evidence uh, from our lab, as, as well as a number of other labs, that mild facial warming will help you fall asleep on average two minutes faster uh, than normal. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's actually the same amount of time that, that uh, hypnotic drugs will enhance your ability to fall asleep. So it is quite, quite dramatic. And it's just a mild, a mild heat. And then as soon as you're, you fall asleep and you go into stage two sleep, then we turn off the heat, so it's not on continuously. It's only on to, to help you fall asleep. Uh, and then, as, as I said, and there, this is what a typical night looks like in terms of your sleep cycles as you're going through the different stages of sleep. Um, you go down into that deep sleep, and as I said, in the beginning of the night, you're going to spend more time in your deep sleep, and then towards the end of the night, you're going to spend more time in your in your REM sleep. And if I wake you up when you're in deep sleep or stage three or four sleep, you are going to be very groggy, very disoriented, and essentially you can defeat the whole purpose of, of a nap if you wake somebody up in the middle of that deep sleep. So we don't want to wake them up in the middle of deep sleep. If I wake you up in the middle of a dreaming cycle, you can be disoriented and you can have sort of strange hallucinations and visions that are essentially, you're still, your brain is still dreaming but your eyes are open. So it, we, we want to wake you up more at the end of a REM cycle. That's the ideal time to wake up. But if you only have 20 minutes or 30 minutes for a nap, 
then we, what we want to do with our device is to keep you from getting into that 